So Google Chrome officially disabled a lot of useful extensions. Ad blockers will be much less efficient. You will see ads. In short, Google decided to limit the freedom of extension developers on their platform, but also of end users for security or probably more likely monetary reasons, because ads are how Google makes their money. So if you still use that piece of junk that is Google Chrome, it is high time that you look at something else. And we'll explore a bunch of alternatives today whether they will be affected by Google's change in how good extensions can be and also a few cool features that they offer. Oh, and we'll also look at this message from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, your all-in-one platform to create, manage and publish your own website. Squarespace has really easy tools to make sure anyone can end up with a nice looking, well-optimized website, no matter if they know how to code or not. They have what they call their blueprint system, which lets you pick from a variety of templates that are pre-built and will suit any type of website, whether it's a simple blog, an online store, a video platform, whatever. On top of that, to go further, Squarespace has their own design engine to create your own pages. You can just drag and drop elements where you want them and you can change the colors, the fonts and just tweak the template however you want. And once you have something you like, you can add extra features like creating your own online shop, complete with a payment system that handles credit cards, PayPal, Apple Pay and more. So check out squarespace.com slash the Linux experiment. The link is in the description so you can give Squarespace a shot and you'll also get 10% off your first website or domain name purchase. So obviously Firefox and its derivatives will be what you want to look out first. Uh, it's been around forever. It's the OG browser that killed Internet Explorer by adding tabs and features that Microsoft just did not want to add. Uh, and until Google started pushing Chrome and making Firefox less compatible with other websites intentionally, notably uh, YouTube and other Google properties, this was the browser everyone used. Nowadays, the market share is really, really low uh, compared to a lot of other web browsers. Uh, it's even lower than Safari because Firefox missed the mobile uh, revolution. And so basically no one uses it. Uh, everyone is just using Chrome or any Chrome derivative. But it is still a fantastic browser. It basically has all the features that Google Chrome has, plus a much better full page uh, screenshot tool, which I use every day uh, for my news video to take screenshots of an entire web page or to take screenshot of certain elements. It has great developer tools. It has its own extension store, which will not be affected by any of the changes that Google is doing, meaning uh, you can still install all the good version of extensions, for example, uBlock Origin, not the light version. And of course, if you don't like Mozilla and their recent controversial moves and focus on AI and stuff like that, you have other derivatives. For example, Waterfox, which is a more private version of Firefox that doesn't come with all the telemetry enabled uh, that you can get in Firefox. Uh, Firefox by default will grab some of your data. Not much, but a little bit. You can disable it easily, but some people don't like that, uh, myself included. So you could go with Waterfox, which is a more private version uh, with more private tabs and stuff like that. Or you can also go to LibreWolf, which is also very much focused on privacy, switches to a more private search engine that is not Google uh, and also includes uBlock Origin by default. All of these variants are still open source as well. Now, there's also an interesting alternative uh, that I tried recently, which is called uh, stupidly Florp. So that's the worst name I've ever heard for any web browser or probably any program, but the name doesn't matter. What matters is the application has a lot more settings over the default Firefox version. It is more private by default, but it also has uh, some changes that you can implement with, for example, uh, the horizontal tab bar or the vertical tab bar, uh, depending on what you prefer. I much prefer the tabs up top, but some people like them in a sidebar over there. You also can change a bunch of settings on how things are displayed, how the theme works, uh, website appearances, 
you also have a browser sidebar here that you can customize that will open uh, certain things in a sidebar here they have a notes feature but you also have basically all the usual bookmarks and stuff like that that appears in here instead of being pop-up windows like on firefox which i quite like here uh, you also have the option to have workspaces, meaning you can change uh, between a home or a work workspace. Uh, I personally don't use that, but some people like to triage their tabs if they have plenty of tabs open, and this is supported here. So that's really cool, and I really like it. Uh, Performance-wise, Florp is absolutely similar to Firefox. It seems just a tiny bit smoother when scrolling. That's probably because its smooth scrolling is better, uh, but that's about it. Uh, and it's, of course, completely open source. Another browser that people recommended is Zen Browser, which is also a Firefox-based thing. It's also open source. Uh, it's still also in development, so it's brand new. Uh, but it does perform better than the base Firefox if you pick the specially optimized build of the browser that is specifically optimized for modern CPUs. And it does result in a bit better performance in certain web-based benchmarks compared to uh, Florp or to the base Firefox. Slight improvements, but still improvements. I personally don't like the fact that it forces you to have vertical tabs here. You don't have a choice. Uh, you do have to have those vertical tabs. You can decide to not expand them, so they're uh, closed and you only see them on hover, or you can expand them completely. I don't like this. I like my tabs up top. I haven't seen a solution to do that, but they do have other uh, settings and improvements that look pretty cool. So for people who like this configuration, I think uh, Zen is actually pretty cool. And it also does go further in terms of performance, which is pretty nice. All in all, if you want to escape the limitations that Google is placing on extensions, your only real choice is to go with Firefox or a Firefox-based browser, because they said they will keep supporting the older version of the extensions API, and they have their own extension store. They are the only other browser that has that, and that also supports the older version uh, of these extensions API, so they will not be affected at all by the changes Google is making. So if you value that you need to use Firefox or any of its derivatives. And now we're moving into Chromium based browsers territory, meaning these browsers are all using the same base as Google Chrome, will be compatible with the same websites, deliver the same performance, but they don't look or feel the same. They don't necessarily give data back to Google and things like that. So the first one will be Vivaldi. Full disclosure, this is not a fully open source browser. Their UI code is proprietary. You can inspect it, it's been audited, but the browser itself is not fully open source. Only the Chromium core is, the rest isn't. Vivaldi is more operating system uh, than web browser. It has a lot of features. It doesn't integrate really well with any Linux desktop, but some people don't mind that. They just want a browser that is very customizable and has a lot of features and that's Vivaldi. It lets you pick where you want your tabs, it lets you pick the theme, it lets you automatically have a tracker and ad blocker, meaning you won't be limited by what Google did because these are not extensions, they are core features of Vivaldi that won't be limited by the changes in Chromium. You also get to decide if you want just a browser or if you want the full operating system with email, calendar, feeds, and stuff like that. You will have to set these things up uh, to add your accounts and other things. I don't think that belongs in a browser, but some people really enjoy this. It's a much more busy browser uh, than other alternatives. Uh, the settings also reflect that. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here, but it is not a bad browser at all. It has plenty of options if you like customization and if you don't really care whether your browser follows your theme and looks like the rest of your computer, you probably will appreciate Vivaldi. Now, Vivaldi said that they will drop Manifest V2 support, meaning they will be constrained by the same changes that Google is making to all extensions. They also just use uh, the API and the uh, store for extensions uh, that Chrome uses. It's uh, the Chrome Web Store. They don't have their own store. So when Google decides to shut down access to older extensions, to the Chrome Web Store, Vivaldi will also lose access to that, but they're not as affected as all other browsers because they have their own tracker blocker and ad blocker built in, meaning, uh, well, 
at least those parts of the experience are not constrained by what Google does. For me personally, Vivaldi does too much. And if I just use the browser component, I much prefer using something Firefox based that is fully open source because Vivaldi isn't. But if you like customization and options, you probably don't have something as fully fledged as Vivaldi out there. Just know that it will be affected by the same changes Google is making for most extensions, just not ad blockers and tracker blockers because they have built their own that aren't extensions. I will go very quickly uh, on Microsoft Edge. This is really not something you should use. It collects a ton of user data. It is not open source apart from the Chromium base, uh, which is the same as Google Chrome's. They already dropped support for manifest v2 extensions uh, and they basically said that their own extension store that they built will also drop that support although they didn't say exactly when meaning it has all the same disadvantages as chrome has except instead of giving your data to google you're giving it to microsoft instead edge doesn't come with a tracker blocker or an ad blocker obviously because microsoft makes some money on data and ads and it will force you to use inferior versions of extensions. Seriously, all other options are better than Microsoft Edge. I'm not just saying that because it's a Microsoft product, but all other browsers will be just as fast, just as compatible, will have the same amount of extensions, but without all the data grabbing or at least letting you disable most of it, letting you support better extensions that still exist or come with their own tracker and ad blockers by default, there is zero reason to use Edge these days. Absolutely none, at least if you're a Linux user or anyone that is mindful of what we're talking about in this video, don't use Edge. Of course, another strong contender is Brave. This is a Chromium web browser, so it's also based on Google Chrome. It will render all web pages similarly to uh, what Google Chrome does. Uh, it's basically the exact same engine. It's also fully open source, except it blocks trackers and everything else in here. So it does have an ad blocker and a tracker blocker that will block all things that you want. It's not reliant on extensions to block all of this, uh, meaning it's not going to be affected in this specific area by the changes uh, that Google is implementing. They call these tracker blockers shields. They're very configurable. Now, obviously all these extensions are still sourced from the Chrome Web Store. So in 2025, when Google Chrome removes the uh, Manifest V2 extensions from the Chrome Web Store, you also won't be able to easily get them in Brave. Probably you will be able to install them manually because Brave said that they wanted to keep support for it, but it won't be as easy as just clicking on the link and clicking install. Now Brave does have a lot of features uh, to configure how private you want things to be, uh, the search engines you want to use, which uh, they have their own search engine, which is Brave Search, which works pretty well. They have the unfortunate drawback of being focused on all the latest hype and stupid crap, like for example, uh, Web3 and crypto. If you don't care about this, if you just want a browser that has plenty of options, plenty of features, and you're able to ignore their focus on uh, trying to hijack ads and put some crypto instead and stuff like that, then sure, you can absolutely use Brave. It's not that bad at all. It's actually a pretty competent browser. Now, there is one other issue that means I will never use Brave. That's their CEO and founder expressing some pretty dumb and harmful opinions over the years. It's easily documented. I won't go into it here. If this matters to you, then go look it up and you'll see if it's important. If you just want the software and you don't care what's around it, then Brave is absolutely a competent option. Just know that it will be affected in the long run by the changes uh, Google is making to Chromium and to Chrome because it does not have its own extension store. So installing good versions of extensions will get trickier as time goes on unless Brave builds their own store, which they could. Opera is another option I will go over uh, very, very quickly uh, because, well, it's not open source apart from the uh, Chromium base that it relies upon. Opera said that they will keep Manifest V2 extension support for as long as they can, but obviously they still rely on the Chrome Web Store, so they are gonna have to follow this thing as well. They have plenty of features, they are not bad, but they're also 
not doing anything that other browsers aren't already doing and they belong to a Chinese consortium which might be a problem for you or not. Honestly, it might be really good, but it doesn't offer anything that other browsers don't already have and that are fully open source. There is no reason for it to be proprietary because everything it does is already available in other open source browsers. So I don't really see any reason to use Opera if you're mindful about uh, freedom, about your data, about privacy, just use something else. Now, of course, you also have other options, like, for example, the Tor browser or the Molvad browser. They are both Firefox-based. They are meant primarily to use the Tor network for maximum privacy, but this comes with a sizable browsing speed trade-off. They are not bad browsers, but they are not necessarily intended to be your primary day-to-day -day browser. They are here for when you really want super private uh, browsing, but that's about it. You also had Arc browser, which seemed interesting, but it doesn't have a Linux version and it's pretty much been abandoned. Uh, their creators just said they were refocusing on, you guessed it, AI, and so the browser will probably not move along anymore. So you probably should not go and use that right now. There's also Maxton browser, but it's designed for Web3 and AI and it isn't cross-platform either. It doesn't have a Linux version. Uh, so yeah, just pff, don't use that. No reason to use this thing uh, compared to anything else either. So all in all, if you want to avoid all those freedom limiting moves that Google is doing to control how you can use your web browsers and what you can install in it and how you access the web, your only real option is Firefox or anything based on Firefox. I personally moved to Florp, despite the absolutely heinous, stupid name. I despise it with all fibers of my being, but the browser itself is really good. I also gave a shot to Zen. Vertical tabs aren't my thing, but if you like that, uh, that's probably cool as well. And it looks like a solid browser. It just doesn't integrate very well with my desktop compared to Florp or regular Firefox. So I will uh, just stick to that. Anyway, we'll conclude on this part. I'll also leave you on this message from our sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. They make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux pre-installed. They built the drivers. They actually started uh, relicensing those to solve a problem and to make sure that they can all be upstreamed into the Linux kernel which is really good because it means everyone can benefit. In the meantime, uh, most distributions will just work perfectly fine on their devices. I only use their computers these days. I have uh, one of their laptops to edit, record, and do everything around the videos that you're watching. I have one of their desktops uh, to do all my gaming on Linux as well. They have plenty of options, plenty of hardware uh, options that you can pick. Uh, you can have your own key custom keyboard layout. You can have your own logo engraved on the lid of your laptop. They're really, really solid. They've been sponsoring the channel for like three years by now. And uh, yeah, super reliable, super dependable, and I have nothing but good stuff to say about that. Obviously, the link to their stuff is in the description. Anyway, this will conclude the video. I hope you enjoyed it. You know where all the usual YouTube buttons are. Uh, click them to make sure that this video uh, works and the channel uh, gets well known in the uh, YouTube sphere, which is highly competitive and complicated. You know how all of this works. If you really enjoyed the channel, plenty of links in the description to support it as well. And in the meantime, thank you all for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!